Hey, welcome to the Expect It Nerder podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. I hope you are having a great week. This is week 37 called Music. Woohoo! <laughs> it is week 37 because I am 37 weeks pregnant and very warm. <laughs> we are, or I am, recording today up in the baby's room. Um, it's still not done. No, no decals on the wall. But I'm sitting, actually sitting in front of the crib, and this is the bedding. And this is the scary sheep of death. It makes white noise, heartbeat, whale sounds, ocean, and rain, I think. But, um, yeah, it's a little scary. Maybe, maybe, okay, because I can't resist, so. Oh, wait, hang on. scary right <laughs> so it's supposed to be soothing to the baby it sound like inside the womb or we have this option that's the <laughs> whale noises <laughs> um my one of my friends said it was an absolute you have to have this sheep you have to have it and of course all the literature or the happiest baby on the block anyways is all about white noise to help your baby sleep so I don't know if we'll be using the sheep who is very cute and plush or if we'll be using my white noise machine and then I'll have the monitor on and so it's like a machine in both places right I can listen to my white noise in here and pipe it into there so anyways tangent tangent um, yeah <laughs> so it's week 37 and it's Friday, and it's hot, and it's August 12th, and so far so good. <laughs> so what's going on in the knitting this week, you say? Well, lots of things are happening in the knitting world. First off, last week I showed you the Lefai uh, pulver that I needed to finish to count it towards the stash dash. It is in, or it's by Rosemary Hill. It was in... Interweave Knits Fall 2010. I knit mine on size 10 6.0 millimeter needles and I used Knit Picks, Knit Picks City Tweed Heavyweight in the color Blue Blood. Um, so see that? That's a, <clears throat> that's a finished edge. That's what that is right there boys and girls. And unwoven in ends. Oops, that's my shirt. But I, um, I literally had, I think, four or five hours worth of knitting left when I put, in December when I put this away. So I'm glad I didn't finish it then, and I finished it this week so I could count the whole sweater towards my stash dash. But, yeah, it's finished. It's done. It looks, it looks good. <laughs> I posted pictures um, on my project page of it just laying on the floor because, of course, I can't try it on. But I'll have a new sweater to wear this fall when the time is right. So, and um, the pretty part about this is, of course, the lace detail up the sleeves and around the collar. So, I'm really pleased with it so far. I need to weave in my ends, but that's the boring part. And there's so much more fun things to do and knit. So that is done. Yay! Sweater done. Um, next, on my needles my shopping list. It's kind of nice sitting on the floor because I can have everything spread out around me, but yeah, and I'm, I'm sitting on my boppy. Yeah, seemed like a nice comfortable chair. <laughs> the um, Opal Rainforest socks that we have seen for several weeks now haven't didn't really go forward much. i um, working on the uh, gusset increases. Sorry about that baby movement. I'm um, working on my gusset increases for the heel on the second sock. Yeah, I'd like to have them done before the baby comes. I'd like to have them done by the 15th so I can count towards the stash dash. But um, yeah, because you know, I showed you before, I don't have them with me. The matching pair I made for the baby. So it would be nice if we could both have our socks that matched. So that is going. The um, Shibui Baby Socks by Helen Bingham. I have been working on 
basically a pair a week, which I think is what I'm going to do until the baby comes. I think I said that last time. Oh, there we go. So these are in Barocco sock. And I finished them this week. Hold still. I like to move a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, so these are were knit on US size twos. And I made the foot five inch five not inches, five rounds longer than the pattern called for, just so that they'll be a little bigger for the baby. And so that's this week's pair of baby socks finished. Up the needles. Um, and then I started next week's, so I'll just give you a little preview of that. Since I felt like this was very feminine, purple, I don't know, feels girly to me. I started a pair of, it's a real deep charcoal and teal. And I'm going to do the, basically all of it in the charcoal color, except for heels and toes. I'm going to do the teal, the bright teal color. So, started those. We'll have those going for next week. This is um, Super Wash Me Sock by Janets. I had some leftovers kicking around, so I thought I'd use that. Um, yeah. What else? So, I'm being very motivated by this stash dash, and I really want to get, achieve my goals, because that's who I am. So, I cast on a hat this week. <laughs> this weekend on Saturday, I realized I needed to burn up some yardage. And so this is the Turn a Square hat by Jared Flood. I've never made one before. I'm sure all of you have, but it's new to me. And this is knit with Barocco Ultra, excuse me, Ultra Alpaca is the, the gray color. And then Barocco Jasper is the striping color. It's kind of hard to see, but it does go from like a brownish tan to black to back to the brownish to black so um, I made it half an inch longer than the pattern calls for just because the men in our family tend to have big heads and this is definitely gonna be a Christmas present so I made it a little longer and then Steve tried it on and it fits him perfect it was right to about there on his ears so that's just where you want it um, it was really quick knit holy cow and I enjoyed it so the Ultra Alpaca is color 6207, and the Jasper, Barocco Jasper, is color 3823. So, very good, very good. 139 yards, so check done off the needles. And then when that was done, I was like, hey, that was so quick and easy. Why don't I knit another one? So then I cast on another one. And this is... Um, Valley Super Wash DK is the solid blue in color, did I write down the color? Color 18. And then again with the uh, Barocco Jasper, and this one you can see the color change a little better than the other one. Um, this is color 3844. So I'm going along, I'm not going as fast, because there are other things distracting me this, after, this weekend. but. Um, this should be done next week, and I thought the light blue might be a little too, too unisex, less masculine. I don't know how to describe it, but um, he says no. So, another Christmas present. So I'm working on that. And then, because this just isn't enough, and you have to be knitting more, I finished... I did not block, but I did weave in my ends, the flamboyant. So, here it is in all of its giant gloriousness. If I were to stretch it, you can't see my hands. Okay, that was me stretched, and I still have a bunch left. Um, I'm going to show you the picture I took of it, just so you can see the giantness of it. So... Yeah, so check it out. It is totally, totally going to be a, like, a good drape. Privacy drape. And I think it's beautiful, and I love the colors. I love the way it came out. I ended up making, 
I got a little confused on the ribbing section and did I think like three or four extra rows. So it's supposed to be three inches, it's probably three and a half, but whatever, a little extra ribbing never hurt. Let's use up a little extra yardage. This is, um, I used String Theory Caper Sock and color names are hard to say, so they're in the show notes. Sorry, I kicked the table. <laughs> Um, what else do I have to say about it? Knit on size fives, and I definitely did make it longer than the pattern called for, and ended up using just, just shy of a thousand yards. So, a thousand yards of the fingering weight sock yarn for this beautifulness. So, I really like it. Okay, so... Yay! And I looked back, I started this in March. It took me from March until now to make it. But this is officially my fourth shawl I've ever knit. And when, I think I went two days without a shawl on the needles, and then I said, okay, I want in two. <laughs> so you know where this is going, right? So I cast on. For the uh, West Knits Mystery Shawl Knit Along 20, 11 the earth and sky pattern is what he's calling it uh, You saw the Claudia hand paints that I bought last week. I ended up going with moss I Ended up going with moss oh, Rock Creek and Mudslide So those are the three colors I picked mudslide is my favorite and it will be the one that I used the least of because um, they didn't have any more for me to buy. So that's what I bought. And this moss is my second favorite, so that will be that anchor color of the three of them. Um, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's great. Thanks for sharing the yarn. <laughs> Show us your project. I am knitting it on. U.S. size 4, 3.5 millimeter needles. I cast it on, um, I'm such a tease. I cast it on on Wednesday, knit through the first clue that day, and then Thursday morning got up at 4 a.m. because this one was not having any more sleep. They were, it was done. Let me punch the mattress, which is the weirdest feeling. I know I've talked about it before, but it's still just like, oh my God, I'm on my side and you feel it. Ugh, it's so, it's bizarre. Anyways, so I got up at four because what the heck, baby wasn't sleeping. I was hungry. I had to go to the bathroom. By the time I ate and went to the bathroom, it was like 4.30. I get up at 5.30 normally. It didn't make sense. So I just knit some more. Anyways, long, long way to tell you that I have not finished the Clue 2 yet, and Clue 3 came out this morning, so that's what I'll be working on this weekend, but, um, yeah, so this is it halfway through Clue 2, just about. So there you have it. Yeah. It's very interesting, um... I'm not really wild about the geometry, right? That, because that's what it, it is. Is it, it, and that's a lot of his patterns are like that with big color blocks, you know, like the flamboyant. You have this big square in the center, and then the two colors out on the wings. Um, this, these are smaller blocks of color, which I'm not super wild about, but I am wild about a knit along. I do really like the yarn and the fact that it's a mystery knit I really want to know what's coming next I really just and it, that will push me to keep knitting it knitting it knitting it um, if I'm thinking that if the shawl goes where I think it's going if I had seen the finished project you know if he had just posted it like a regular pattern up for sale no way <laughs> would I have bought this I would much rather have knit the daybreak the boneyard there are several of his other shawls more of the like striping ones that I think are beautiful that I would have knit before I knit this that being said I have what four inches here like that's nothing of a shawl and once um, 
I really get going, I'll probably feel differently about it. Who knows? But I do enjoy the colors quite a bit. And the yarn is super soft, 100% super wash merino. Really, really nice to work with. It's always been nice to work with. It was, it was my first hand dyed yarn love. Yep. Yep. So that's, uh, that's my progress on it so far. And I realized I was trying not to cast it on because, oh, the stash dash, stash dash. I don't want to, you know, waste my knitting energy on an unfinished project. And then someone posted in one of the threads, like, even if you're not finish the project sorry movement even if you're not finished the project you still can count the yardage that you knit while the time in the stash dash so then I realized well what am I doing knitting socks that I'm not really motivated to work on and I'm like forcing myself to do it versus a shawl I really want to knit and oh, I want to keep up and I want to see what everyone else is doing and talk and engage and have a good time with it this will fly by a lot faster like, I will want to knit this and read the next line of the pattern and do it. So, I'm sort of switching gears from, ah, oh, I've got to finish everything to, okay, just work on things and do things you really like that will motivate you to keep knitting, 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 knitting. So, as of right now, with the flamboyant done, I believe I am at 4,400 yards. So, I need to do about 1,000 yards this weekend. It's not a small feat, but... I am an avid knitter and our weekend is wide open just in case because that's how we planned our life this summer so I <laughs> will most likely be propped up in front of a fan knitting away and please come back from vacation other podcasters because you're making it very hard for me especially um, Lisa from 90% Knitting and Stephen from Dramatic Knits Come on, you guys. I want you every week. And I feel like you've been on vacation forever. And maybe it's because I just really wanted some knitting company this week. But come back. Podcast some more. So, anyways. That is it uh, for knitting this week. Expectations. So, moving on to expectations. Um, this week we had our last birthing class. Thank God, because, you know, we're doing three weeks from now. Um, I am a birthing class graduate and dear hubby is a dropout. He actually was unable to attend the class with me this week because he's taking his big comp exam. But, um, it's okay. <laughs> he wasn't the only, or I wasn't the only one there without her husband. So, or partner, whatever, coach, person. So, I, I was okay with that. Um. Let me just see. Did we learn anything of importance? Um, and I took like super intense notes because he wasn't with me and I wanted to make sure to tell him everything. So one thing that she did, the instructor did encourage us to do was to ask in the um, doctor's appointments before the delivery to ask ahead of time what interventions might be needed due to our particular circumstances with the pregnancy. Um, she explained that the vacuum to pull the baby out, um, if it's used, it isn't used the whole time and it's not a replacement for pushing. Um, it would be used for like the last five or 10 minutes of the delivery. So of course, it's like, where are your keys in the last place you looked? Well, how long would you use the vacuum? Well, until the baby comes out. So yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, and then she explained a little bit that like like what will happen after delivery in our room and with the baby and what Steve's role will be in um, taking care of the child while I get cleaned up and all that stuff. And um, yeah, and I encouraged all of us that everything we need to do this is to deliver is in us and we can do it. So, and then I also had. Um, two more non-stress tests this week and it's funny the baby's heartbeat is almost steadily on either side of a hot 135 like a little below a little above but that's like the average which is good it's right where it should be my blood pressure is perfect 110 over 70 today so 
Um, that would be Linus. He wants and to come after in. one of my non-stress tests this week. I had a doctor's appointment and got a surprise ultrasound. So I think the uh, midwife I was seeing had time because there was absolutely nothing wrong. And she was just like, oh, let's see where the baby is. So she pulls out the equipment and um, we look and oh my God. <laughs> she was funny. She, she, we're looking at it and she says, this is not a petite baby. <laughs> and we could clearly see that I'm not going to do it because of big but the it was like this with its knees like right up around here on both sides of its arms and it was sucking its thumb and practicing breathing like we could see the the belly going up and down and the heartbeat and it looks so different compared to a um, week 20 ultrasound because at week 20 they can take the you know they take the picture for you to take home and it takes up the baby can fit in the entire picture. Okay, at week 37, you can get to about here, from like top to here, because the baby is now so big. But, um, good news, baby's in the right position, head down, ready to go, and she encouraged me not to worry that no way that baby's got enough room to turn around or get out of position, so, yay! <laughs> Um, I did finish reading this week. I finished reading um, The Girlfriend's Guide to Baby Gear by Vicki Iovan. talked about it before. Um, there were just a couple of interesting points that I thought I would share with you from this book. Um, it's the actually the first place that I've seen a good list, sorry, kicks, a good list of baby grooming supplies that you will need for at home, and that is one of the two things that I have not done to prepare yet so here are the things that it said um, we were gonna want that I didn't realize we were gonna want so um, a hairbrush and I was like okay but we are both bald as babies like we're probably gonna have a bald baby but she points out that a hairbrush is a really good way of like removing dead skin things like that kind of gross but I guess it's the reality of it and if you have it early on you'll have it later when the hair does come in um, infant strength ibuprofen and acetaminophen. I didn't realize that there was a difference between children's and infant, so, okay, need to get some of that. And then electrolyte rehydration s solution. I think that's for diarrhea or, or vomiting, just something you should have in your medicine cabinet. Um, syrup of uh, Ipecac. That just like that's to induce vomiting I can't believe that people still have and use that stuff but um, I guess we need to have some for under our sink and then she encouraged that with the um, whoever the medicine is that we should also have an emergency contact list including poison control pediatrician both parents like cell work numbers and um, grandparents if the case if they are reachable and needed um, and then the other thing that I found really helpful out of this book, um, or the second half of this book, was a list of resources and websites to bookmark that you might need later on, and so it's good to have them now. Uh, the first one was the American Academy of Pediatrics, so good to know. Um, La Leche League, and of course, Baby Center which I already used Baby Center, but I need to bookmark the other ones. There were, I think it was a list of ten, but those were the three that I was like, oh yes, I definitely agree with. And, um, <laughs> just because I have one more thing to tell you, um, she also had a list of top ten things that you can live without. So, things that if you, someone purchases for you, return, exchange, whatever, or... Uh, don't put these things on your registry. So, thought I'd share her list with you. Um, a bottle warmer, bottle sterilizer, after bath kimono, which I was totally, like, was on my registry, but she's probably right. How long are they going to be hanging out in the little bathrobe? Um, hooded towels, which I got a couple, but she makes the point that you can just use regular towels. Infant shoes, drool bibs, <laughs> um, a playpen. I don't know if the, a playpen is something different than a pack and play, 
I definitely wanted a pack and play and I'm very happy to have one because it has the bassinet on the top and so we're planning on setting it up wherever we are and the baby can sleep in it in the living room, put it in our bedroom if we need to at the beginning, whatever. Um, laundry or ham like a laundry hamper. Okay, so we'll throw a basket in the closet and call that good. Um, a luxurious carriage, so like the big fancy prams and whatnot. And then a white warmer. So that's what she says to live without. <laughs> also this week, <laughs> I was reading my pregnancy week by week book. Sorry, I didn't bring it up with me. Um, and it was talking about things to pack in your hospital bag and things that you'll want for delivery. Uh, one of the things that they mention is that instrumental music has been proven. Um, instrumental music, including synthesizer, harp, piano, orchestra, or jazz, listened to for at least three hours during early labor, um, caused the women in the study to experience less pain and helped relax them and distract them from the pain. So that says use some instrumental synth music during delivery. I was thinking, I Dad has this Yanni concert CD that I really like. It's pretty upbeat, but it's also all instrumental synthesizers. So definitely going to put that on my playlist. Um, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss as to what else to put for music. But then NPR published an article on August 3rd of this week, or last week, that one of our friends sent to us about um, different musical selections people have listened to while they were giving birth. And so I thought I'd read a couple of the funnier songs. So Push It by Salt and Pepper. The Star Wars theme, I don't really get that one because it would make me think like, oh god, Darth Vader's coming. It would make me think like, yes, I don't know. I, I don't feel hopeful when I hear that theme. I feel like, oh, doom, the evil empire or whatever. Um, <laughs> I want to be sedated by the Ramones. Lonely Island, I'm on a boat, which Lonely Island is very popular in our house right now. <laughs> so I would probably not listen to I'm on a boat, but Jack Sparrow is probably going to make the list. <laughs> um, Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. <laughs> I think that would just make me hate the song forever, but and then uh, lastly, King of Paint by the police. So those are some of the NPR suggestions of what to listen to during delivery. And I think, aside from my crazy also envisioning me at the hospital, not really sure how much pain I'm going to be in, maybe I'll bring some knitting, stocking at knitting to work on while I'm there. <laughs> we'll see if that's a crazy idea or something that... That's doable. I know that if I'm going to be there for two days at some point, there must be some stocking at knitting. I can't imagine there wouldn't be, but stop laughing. If you are a mother and have delivered and you were like, oh no, honey, you have no idea what you're getting into. Um, we'll see. <laughs> One of my midwives, I was talking to her. I, okay, so the delivery nurse I talked to was like, oh yeah, people bring in knitting. Not, no big deal. One of my midwives, when I talked to her, she was watching me knit a sock during one of the non-stress tests, and, she, and I mentioned that I was thinking about bringing it during delivery. She's like, I don't know, pointy objects, little tiny sharp pointy objects while you're in that much pain? I don't think it's a good idea. And of course we were laughing about it, but yeah, so that's expectations for this week. Um, what's new with you? What's new with me? <laughs> Let's see, I have a bob now, and I had wanted to show it to you, and maybe I still will run downstairs and snap some footage of it. So here it is. Here is our bob. Um, you can see the boys are giving it a thorough inspection. It came, we had the choices of getting it in black, navy, purple, or orange. And... <laughs> Well, I voted for black, Steve said, safety first, dear. And we got the Home Depot orange that cars will be able to see as they drive by. So, and so far this week, the boys have been using it as their hammock. So, there's the bob. But 
we were really excited to get the Bob stroller. I also ordered the ordered some yarn from Webs. It's not here yet. But um, remember last week I showed you the Veritas, which is a uh, fingerless glove and cowl combo that I really, really, really dig from Classic Elite. Uh, it is using their wool bamboo yarn. I ordered from Webs the six colors exactly as they are like I love it so much I'm gonna knit just exactly like everybody else because I think it's such a beautiful set and I want them so I ordered that yarn it's on its way and then I've been thinking about um since I finished a sweater and all that stuff and it was really fun to get a nice big project done it's made me really want to work on another like throw another sweater on the needles and so I'm torn if it should be a, um, well, okay. So there are two sweaters in this book, New England Knits by Cicely Glowick McDonald and Melissa Labray. Um, there are two sweaters in here that I have yarn and I absolutely love them. And I was thinking, oh, I could cast on now and it, I could knit something and it would be my Rhinebeck sweater because we're planning to go to Rhinebeck this year. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm, I'm motivated here, people. I want to knit. So mm. uh, the two sweaters are, I'm going to show you both, and then I'm going to tell you why I think I'm leaning towards one. So the Hampton Cardigan, really like that one, right? Nice, lightweight. Yeah, really like that one. And then the other one is the Melrose Peacoat really like that one as well um i have some cascade eco plus i think it is whatever the eco wool is that the colored version so i have a nice navy that i think would be really pretty in this and i want both of these sweaters but after i thought about it and if it this is going to be a sweater for rhinebeck i've been the last three years and i've never um been warm so usually I have on a shirt, a sweater, a fleece, and then a jacket on top of it. Like, it's always cold in mid-October in upstate New York, or the mountains, Berkshire, New York, whatever. Um, so I don't think that the, um, the Hampton cardigan is a good option since it is so lightweight and airy. Chances are I'm going to have a coat on on top of it or something underneath it, and it'll just look bulky and sausage so I don't want to do that I think that the Melrose Peacoat is a much better option for me so in the coming weeks in the coming weeks next week <laughs> you should see that on the needles and it's knit on size tens so whew, that's gonna be a, a pretty quick knit the back has um, this sort of tree motif I don't know what they call it when I first saw it I thought Oh, it's a flower panel is what they're calling it. When I first saw the motif, I was like, ah, oh, leave it out. I don't, I don't like that. But now it's been, what, six months? I think it's fine. It would keep it interesting rather than doing a straight stockinette panel. So we'll see if I do it or not. But that's what's coming up on the horizon in my knitting world. And I think that's it for this week. So... Thanks for watching. Uh, you can find a show note. You can find show notes for everything I've talked about on the blog, www.expectantknitter.blogspot.com. Uh, there is a Ravelry group called Expectant Knitter Podcast. If you'd like to join us, I'd love to hear your thoughts on things, and it's always nice to see new people in the group. So that's it, and take care. I will see you back here for week 38 next week. Bye.